Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast with Napoleon Kaufman, the longtime NFL running back with the Oakland Raiders and now pastor out in Livermore, California. It's brought to you by Compassion International. They are the most trusted child development ministry in the world. We love compassion. We love what they stand for. We love what they're about. And that is releasing children from poverty. Think about that. Releasing children from poverty. No child should be in poverty and and no child should be without the basic necessities of life. We're talking about food and education and medical care and training for jobs. No child should be deprived of that. But there are children that don't have that. And they're really lost without hope across the world, but compassion comes right in there. And this is what they do. They connect you with a child in need, and through the local church, they bring, through your $38 a month tax-deductible donation, an opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus. That's most important. But they also bring you an opportunity to provide that food and that education and that medical care and that vocational training. That's what compassion is all about. So pray about sponsoring a child today. You can check out the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. You'll see a list of children there, and then do it. Sponsor a child today in Jesus' name. Really excited to welcome Pastor Napoleon Kaufman to Sports Spectrum. And if that name rings a bell, I think you know why. Because he played in the NFL for six seasons with the Oakland Raiders. He was actually a first round pick selected 18th overall in the first round by the Oakland Raiders in 1995, came to Oakland and spent six years there, had some really good years, including one year where he rushed over 1200 for, for over 1200 yards in 1997, had a game against the Broncos where he rushed for 227 yards in beating the eventual Super Bowl champions that year. And then, at the age of 27, Napoleon Kaufman walked away from the NFL. He felt a call. He felt a nudge. He felt the Lord saying it's time to do more for him. So Napoleon left his football career at 27 years old and went into ministry, which leads him to where he is today, the pastor, the senior pastor at the Well Christian Community Church in Livermore, California. You're going to love Napoleon Kaufman's story. Take a listen to it right now here on Sports Spectrum. Napoleon, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure to be on with you, buddy. It's great to talk to you. I love your journey because it's to me it's fascinating. Um, and it's just looking at the, the dates, I couldn't believe it. It's been 20 years now that you left your, your NFL career at the age of 27 and pursued ministry. Your entire five-year career and six seasons was with the Raiders. Let's start, though, with, I guess, 2020. What were your thoughts on seeing the end of the Raiders in Oakland as they get ready to to move out to Las Vegas? What was that like? Well, I guess you could say it's, it's bittersweet. You know, I understand the business side of it. They have been here for a while, uh, grinding away, trying to get something solidified in terms of a uh, – in terms of a building, and it just—it was just—it seemed like it's just a big headache. Yeah. And uh, having played in the stadium, I know that uh, it's not fun playing on that baseball field half of the season, <laughs> and uh, and then it's just not in good condition. Let's just be honest. So I can see what Mark was doing uh, in terms of trying to get this thing, uh, getting getting a you know a nice facility, a, a, you know a a 21st century <laughs> facility up, you know what I mean? So um, it's bittersweet, though, because I know the fans in Oakland are going to miss the team and whatnot. But uh, but the fans, you know, Raider Nation is Raider Nation, so they're going to follow the team. They may be mad now, but they'll they'll end up getting the tickets. Yeah, I have a good friend of mine who lives here in Connecticut, and obviously Raider Nation is all over the country, and he's sticking with them. It's not like he's not going to be a fan <laughs> of the Las Vegas Raiders or whatever they'll be called. He's going to be a fan of the Raiders because he's part of Raider Nation. And I wonder for you, when you played, what was that experience like being a part of Raider Nation? And certainly Al Davis was around during those days. What was that like being a, a member of the Raiders, a football player playing for that team? 
You know, for me, it was uh, it was a uh, you know a dream come true because I grew up in Southern California, and uh, I was always a Raider fan basically my whole life. And most of the time, I knew the Raiders as the the Los Angeles Raiders or the L.A. Raiders. And so um, we would go down to the games and stuff, and I would support the team from my house and whatnot. But and so when I got the opportunity to play, it was just surreal. But then getting into the organization, seeing how serious Mr. Davis was about the team, and then uh, some of the guys that I had seen on television, Tim Brown and James Jed and, and Steve Wisniewski and these guys, and now, you know, Greg Townsend, next thing you know, you're, you're in the huddle with these guys. So it was, uh, it was a blessing, but it was also, um, you know, a dream come true for me because I've been I've been a Raider my whole life. Yeah, not just as a fan, but then then to be able to be a Raider as a player. What's your favorite memory? I yeah. think I might know the answer to this, but what's your favorite memory playing football in Oakland? Man, you know it's hard for me to put just just one because I've had so many. I had you know I had a, a really six year career there and, and had some great memories. I mean, obviously the Denver game when I rushed for two twenty seven yep. is a big one. But then, but then you know, but then we had other games when we beat the Chiefs at home one year and and just you know, it's there, a lot. It's a lot. Well, the two hundred twenty seven yard game against Denver. Can you remember? Take us through a little bit of that. What that's like? Because you know, I talk to a lot of athletes, a lot of former athletes, and I talk about the zone a lot. We all do, like that moment when you're at your peak. And there's nothing like it. We just had on recently a college basketball player from Marquette, uh, Marcus. Uh, Howard, who scored 50 in a game with Marquette. And I said, what's that like to have, you know, that moment when you just are feeling it, you're in the zone, you know, nothing's going on. What's that like? And for you, 227 yards rushing in a game is in a equal, probably equally like scoring 50 in a basketball game for a running back. <laughs> what's that like for you when you're having a, a game like that? Well, it was just amazing. I mean, we came right out early, and uh, I had a, I popped a couple long runs earlier in the game, and then uh, our defense was playing really, really well. We were, we were. It was a battle, and they were undefeated, and they actually went on to win the Super Bowl that year, and so it was a back and forth affair. And uh, yeah, you know, you're just in a zone. Our line was doing great. The, the officer coordinators calling the right plays, and you just really. They just struggled with us that day. That's all I'll say is they, they had a hard time stopping our running game, and uh, we were really getting after those guys. And it, it, felt, it felt great, you know. And I've, obviously I've had many moments like that playing. But uh, against those guys on that day, it's, uh, it, was, it definitely is a memory that I'll, I'll never forget. Napoleon Kaufman is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Okay, so your journey today has you pastoring a church. But that journey – always has a beginning, right? So let's intersect the conversation from sports to faith and hear your testimony, Napoleon. Share with us uh, your journey and coming to faith in Christ and where that started for you. Well, I think, I think uh, the seeds were sown in my life when I was young. You know, I, uh, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I grew up uh, uh, in a, you know, a tough situation, but I, I didn't grow up where we went to church every Sunday. And I, I had a, I had some friends that invited me to a church uh, a few times, and I would go, and I was kind of interested, but, you know, with it not being practiced in the home, it made it kind of tough. But then, but then I always never forget the encounters I did have when I, when I, was, uh, when I did go to church, and I really loved, you know, being in the services and the worship and whatnot. But uh, it wasn't until my sec- going into my second year in the league that I was out at practice one day and I could tell that God was kind of drawing me and sending people to give me tracks and minister to me and tell me, Hey, have you ever considered, you know, um, coming to church with us or, or, you know, uh, learning more about Jesus Christ. And, and so I would kind of always just be very respectful, but nah, I'm not, not now, but uh, God has started dealing with me going into my second year, uh, of training camp. And as I was, on my way to Napa to the camp, I can remember just feeling, I just feel like I need to change something in my life. Something's not right. You know, I just wasn't feeling something wasn't right. And, uh, and one of my teammates, Ron Davison, he was on the team and he was saved. He loved God. And he, 
he just came to me one day at, pra- at practice on the field during training camp. He said, hey, Napoleon, Napoleon. <laughs> he said, hey, man, you, you don't even look like the type of guy to be out here cussing and acting crazy like the rest of these guys, man. Don't you know God can use your life, man? Don't you know God can use your life? Wow. And when he said that, um, immediately my response was, you know, hey, who are you talking to? Blah, 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 you know. <laughs> but then when I, went to my, when I went to my room, I just kept hearing those words in my head. Don't you know God can use your life? Don't you know God can use life? And I said, this is it, man. I got to start. I got to give my life to God. I got to stop playing around, messing around in the streets, living the way I'm living. And I need, I need God in my life. And so I went home to my training, my room at training camp, my hotel room. And that night I gave my life to Christ all by myself. I got on my knees, gave my life to Christ. And I dedicated my life to Christ right there. I got up the next morning and I, and I, and I told Jerome, I said, Hey man, I gave my life to Jesus last night. He said, what? (laughs) I said, man, I, I heard what you said. And that really impacted me, man. I, I, and, and this right. I mean, I, I gave my life to Jesus Christ last night, man. I got on my knees and asked the Lord to come into my life. So I want to know if you can uh, teach me more about the Bible and, and teach me. So what ended up happening was every day during training camp, we would have prayer times and we would, and we would have um, uh, study times. And so we would get together, me and him, after after practice and we just go through the bible and then from there um he just basically helped to disciple me and teach me about the things of god and i just continued to grow and i when i made my commitment i never looked back i never turned back i said this is what i want to do with my life and then christ just just continued to invade my life and it's i haven't looked back since We'll get back to our conversation with Napoleon Kaufman. What a great testimony he has in just a moment, but want to tell you again about Compassion International, our sponsors, our partners with us here at Sports Spectrum. They release children from poverty. That's really what it is. They provide a sort of conduit between you and between a child and allow an opportunity for you to sponsor that child and release them from poverty. You can make that difference right now by going to the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. You can pray about it. You can talk talk it over with your family. And then just go do it. It's $38, tax deductible, and that opportunity to help release a child from poverty. The most trusted child development ministry in the world is Compassion International. We love them. I know you will, too. Consider sponsoring a child today by going to that website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. I promise you, you won't regret it. Let's get back to our conversation with Napoleon Kaufman, longtime Oakland Raiders running back, now pastor, here on Sports Spectrum. So you're still playing in the NFL, and yeah. I read that you kind of became a de facto team chaplain as a player. You were yeah. reading Bible studies and baptizing players at the yeah. facility. Yeah. What what did that look like for you when you started <laughs> to see those things take shape? Because it's one thing to begin a walk with the Lord, and a lot of people say, hey, I'm, I'm not qualified to lead a Bible study. I just came to Christ, or I'm not qualified to you know, lead a chapel service. What was that like when you started to see these opportunities come? And, and honestly, how did these opportunities come about for you? Well, what happened was once I gave my life to Christ and, uh, um, you know, I was very vocal about, you know, about Christ. I was very vocal about the Lord and about who he is and what he had done for my life. And so I would testify and talk to my teammates. I would talk to administration. I would talk to the coaches. I would talk to, you know, I even gave a Bible to Al Davis. So I would, I would, you know, I was very, very open about what God had done for me. And so what ended up happening was, um, at that time, we didn't have an official team chaplain on the team. Yeah. And so um, we just started gathering together, myself, Jerome, and other guys, we started gathering together and just having Bible studies. And we would have prayer times, and we would have times where we would sit sit and just discuss the things of God. We had, we had a revival on the team. And so uh, when John Gruden took over the team, he said, hey, look, we don't have an official. And this was like three years later. Yeah, it was, it was three years later. Um, 
John came and he said, look, we don't have an official guy. I want to know if you'll lead it. You just lead the guys. And I said, okay, you know, uh, I will. And so uh, we would just have our regular chapel services and I would preach and minister to the guys and love on the guys. And, and obviously I didn't know everything, but I knew enough uh, to be able to, you know, communicate clearly what, what God was saying in this word concerning things. And so we would have our great times. And then, man, it was so powerful because then guys started coming and, and asking to be baptized. So we would baptize the guys in the, uh, in the Raiders whirlpool, whirlpool hmm. right there. And uh, we'd have like a little baptismal service and stuff. And, and at the same time, I'm still being discipled by my, uh, by uh by my church and, and by pastor and by Jerome and these guys and so I'm still growing but then God is still moving so it was a powerful powerful time I'd say so that's pretty awesome but then at some point this intersects in your world and you're thinking okay I'm being called away from football and that's hard for a lot of people to understand I wonder <laughs> if you can go back to that time because I remember this calling too. You know, I, I had the same thing. I was a little bit older, but I had the same feeling about going into ministry when I was at ESPN. And it was about two years before I actually felt like the Lord was saying, okay, now is the time until I actually walked, you know, away from ESPN and into the world that I'm in now in sports spectrum and sports ministry. When did that really start to take shape for you when you said, okay, I think God's calling me away from the NFL here? Because you were just 27 when you played your last game. Yeah. So what ended up happening was, you know, during this time, you know, these, these six years, really, you know, I'm, I'm growing, I'm, I'm immersed. And this is what I tell people, you get you a strong local church. Everybody needs a pastor. Yeah. Everybody needs a pastor. And so I had a great local church that was very thorough and helping me to grow and mature and teach me the truth and help me to understand, uh, you know, uh, God's view of things. And, and so I had a good support system around me, but then I started really feeling that God was kind of dealing with me about putting the cleats up. And initially, obviously I, I, I kind of was hesitant about that and really ran from it because, but then God started really, you know, dealing with me. And then through a series of events, I really knew that this is what, God is calling me to do. And, uh, and then I got confirmation from my pastor and, and I want to share this story because this is one of the things that really changed my life. Pastor James Davis, who was my pastor at the time. Um, he said, uh, I told him, I said, I said, pastor, I, I really feel like God is calling me to go into full-time ministry and to retire. Hmm. And, uh, he was on the phone and he got real quiet. Jason got real quiet. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it sounded like it sounded. It felt like for like forty-five seconds. And he said, he said, he said, Napoleon. He said, son. He said, son. I was afraid he was going to do this to you. <laughs> wow. He said, but he said, but whatever he tells you to do, you got to do it. Yeah. He said, whatever he tells you to do, you got to do it. You got my support. And so, and then from there, it was like, you know, obviously there was a couple other events, but that right there, when Pastor James said that to me, I knew, I said, you know what, I got to do it. So I talked to my wife, we stepped out and it was, uh, <laughs> whoo, it was crazy, but it's been, I look back and I tell you what, it's been awesome, man. Awesome, Jason. Did you know your last game, which I think was, in, if I'm remembering correctly, would have been the playoffs of 2000. So that was yeah, the AFC yeah. championship game that against the, game, yeah. the Ravens, right? The, when the Ravens, the Ravens upset yeah, you guys. Yeah. Did you know that was going to be yeah. your last game at that point? No, I did not. No, I did not. Okay. No, I did not. I did not. I did not know. You know, we were, we were riding high. I had just signed it. A six million dollar deal. I mean, I didn't know, but when we got to the off season, and I started, uh, you know, fasting and praying, and 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 what I would do every off season, I would go on a long fast and then pray and then and then get ready for the next season. When I started fasting and praying, God started dealing with me, and then, like I said, um, I've already you know shared with you the story, but that's what ended up happening. I knew that uh, you know God's calling me off, and and I tell you what, I have been, I've been. I'm 
mean, I can't explain how blessed I've been. Yeah. No regrets at all. I mean, I wondered, and that's certainly not regrets, because if you're following God's call, there is no regrets. And I feel the same way in my journey. But was there ever time, 28, 29, 30, when you're pursuing ministry, but you're still young enough where you were thinking, God, are you wanting me to go back and try to play? Did that ever take place in that sort of early days? No. No? I've never, I've never desired. One of the things that happened to me, Jason, was one day I was, uh, we're playing a game. And I forgot which team we were playing. And I looked up into the stands, into the black hole, and they were introducing the players. And uh, when I looked up into the stands, right before the game, I just started kind of crying. Hmm. And as I was looking from the stands, and, and it was like, and I was, and I was getting weepy because my heart was to share the gospel with these people. It wasn't, it's like God was taking my heart away from the game. And I had such compassion for the people in the stands that I was looking at that, that I had to shake myself out of it. And, and, and then they introduced me, you know what I mean, before the game. But I can remember God kind of taking my heart away from the game. And that's basically what happened. So I have, once I left, I, I didn't have any desire to have 300-pound guys jumping on my back anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that makes complete sense. But that, <laughs> but that was, but that was it. I, that was it. I just knew that, you know, God had kind of taken my heart away from the game. And, and so my, my passion is, is Christ and helping people. When, when you had that conversation, I presume you had it with Al and uh, Mr. Davis and with uh, John Gruden, what was that like? Do you remember that conversation and telling them the news? Yeah. You know, I went into John and I said, Hey man, I'm going to be walking. I'm going to be, and for John, for John Gruden, it wasn't a surprise because he knew how passionate I was about Christ and about the things of God. Yeah. And I would do my job. I still averaged five yards a carry my last year in the league, but I, but I, he, he understood I was serious about it. So, you know, obviously Mr. Davis was disappointed and whatnot, but, uh, but they also understood. And even my teammates, if you ask any of my teammates, they would tell you that uh, we're not surprised that he did that <laughs> you know right. because he was preaching to us all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Napoleon Kaufman's our guest here on Sports Spectrum. A couple more questions with Napoleon. So you're pastoring the Well Christian Community Church in Livemore, California. Tell me about how the church came about and your opportunity to become the pastor and all the... Because I'm, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, that when you left the Raiders to go into ministry... You didn't become a pastor right away, and maybe you did, but tell no. me about all no. that and then coming to where you are now as a, as the senior pastor. So what ended up happening was once I retired, um, uh, well, actually, while I was playing, I was, uh, I was licensed as a minister of the gospel, and I was continuing to tra- get trained up in my local church. And uh, by this time, because the church I was, Pastor James Davis's church was in Sacramento, and I was living in, in uh, you know, out way closer to Oakland, I ended up going to a church called Gateway City Church. Pastor David Canastracy, who is still my pastor to this day, hmm. he, uh, uh, they, they ordained me uh, eventually in their church. And then I started serving uh, there in the church and was faithful there. But then I had an itinerant ministry where I would go and preach all over the country the gospel. And so uh, it wasn't until 2003 or 2002 that that, uh, I started feeling like God was calling me to start a church. And I asked my pastor about it. He prayed about it, him and the elders. And he said, man, this is God. We're going to send you out to plant a church right here. You got our full support and, uh, and let's go do it. So we planted our church and it just, our first service, we had turn away crowd, people coming from all over the place and it's just continued to grow. And our ministry has been totally blessed. And so, um, not that we haven't had our battles, you know, the devil's always trying to, to stop what you're doing, but God has been very gracious and, and a lot of people have been blessed through the ministry. So it's been, uh, it's been a it's been a blessing, Jason. No, oh, I love that. As we close here, and I love following you on Twitter because you tweet a lot of 
quote, just thinking moments on Twitter about things oh, yeah. going on through your mind. You like that hashtag just yeah. thinking. Um, so where God yeah. has you right now, what's, what's he been teaching you today? What is the just thinking thoughts that you're learning from the Lord today where he has you right now? You know, I think, I think the big thing for me and, and what we're, we're this year for us and our church is, 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 um, is the foundation is, a lot of times you go in God, and every now and then it's good to go back and revisit the foundation and um, to 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 rehash things that are necessary to, that that were necessary in the beginning that are necessary now. And so for me, that's one of the things that I've just been meditating on is making sure that in every aspect of my life that I have great foundation and we're building our church, my life, my family, my marriage, my business, whatever it is, with a solid foundation, that which God has established. And so uh, we like to go back and inspect the foundation every now and then. And in my personal life and in our church, that's what we really have been doing is making sure that our motivations are right, our footing is right, our support system is right, our infrastructure is right, all those things that are going to sustain us. Because, you know, you have a lot of people, they're like shooting stars. You know, they, they, they fire up for a while, and then they fizzle out. But we want to be the kind of church, and I want to be the kind of person that people look for 50 years from now and say, that guy's still faithful to God. Mm. That's a blessing. And it happens because you have good foundation. Yeah, that's really good stuff there. He is Napoleon Kaufman, longtime NFL running back with the Oakland Raiders, current pastor. Love talking to you, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Spectrum and uh, wish you nothing but the best in ministry and keep, uh, keep shining that light for the Lord. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jason. Bless you, man. Great stuff there from Napoleon Kaufman, former NFL running back with the Oakland Raiders. Now pastoring the church, Livermore, California, the Well Christian Community Church, Napoleon Kaufman, great guy. And uh, I, I love his story. I loved his testimony coming to faith in his hotel room during training camp with the Raiders and just not looking back at that point. What a what an awesome testimony of what the Lord can do, truly doing a 180 in his life and turning his life around and honestly changing his life forever, uh, changing the direction of his life, taking him from, from football being able to use his story to impact so many people for the kingdom. Just an awesome, awesome testimony. You can give him a follow over on Twitter. I mentioned his Twitter page, Napoleon Kaufman. You'll find him there, Pastor Napoleon. And uh, the just thinking hashtag that he posts. He'll post a lot of wisdom, some scripture, and just a little hashtag just thinking, which I just love seeing on social media. So many thanks to Napoleon for being here on Sports Spectrum, and many thanks to you for listening. As always, we can uh, direct you to our website, sportspectrum.com. We love uh, having people go check that out. There's new content every day there, uh, articles on the intersection of sports and faith. There's uh, you know devotional in the morning, first thing, and then there's every podcast that we do. Uh, all sorts of different kind of content and articles that you can check out over at sportspectrum.com. You can also subscribe to our magazine, 18 bucks for the whole year, and it goes to our ministry, and it's a quarterly magazine, uh, plus a couple of bonus issues. So you get about six magazines in the year for 20 bucks, pretty cheap, and it's a great magazine. It really is. It's a, it's a as I like to say, a tangible piece of literature that you can give to someone who loves sports. And they'll get to read about Jesus and they'll get to read about these athletes stories, these athletes testimonies, these athletes lives being impacted by the Lord. So subscribe today. I'd love to have you be a part of our Sports Spectrum family for 18 bucks. Go to SportsSpectrum.com. Of course, you can reach us on our social media pages as well. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can like us and reply and DM and retweet and share and all those buzzwords that social media has. You can find us on social media and maybe send a note to Napoleon or send a note to me and, and let us know that you heard the, the podcast. We'd love to, to share it with other people. A lot of times the best way for us to share what we've done is to have you share that you heard it and that you like this interview or that you had an issue with this interview. Either way, we'd love to hear your feedback through social media. And then our YouTube channel is a great place to find content as well. And you can subscribe there. We love you guys. We really do appreciate you. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time right here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Have a great rest of your day.